this is for Jason one more time for debuting Pixel Tools, a creative toolkit for Black Magic Design. Vinci Resolve, there you go. Hey again, guys. So I'm really, really excited to give you guys the worldwide sneak peek of Pixel Tools. It is a toolkit that I've been working on for a number of months now, and I'm really, really excited to show you guys. So essentially what it is, is I have been watching people work in DaVinci Resolve for some time. And if you have been working in DaVinci Resolve, you know that there's something called power grades. Now, it is essentially a preset, but most people seem to ignore that. And I don't really know why. Now, what I'm going to show you is essentially a toolkit for the modern creative. Now, what I mean by that is if you're a filmmaker, an editor, or even a colorist, I created essentially what I think of as a handyman's toolkit for Resolve. And in it, I have been putting together a bunch of creative looks and a bunch of utility presets to solve all of the common video issues that you may be having. Now, these are using the current effects that are built into Resolve, and I've been testing these in the field with colorists, editors, as many people as I can get my hands on that can give me feedback. We'll get there in a second. Now, one of the reasons that this is really, really different than probably almost any other product you've seen for Resolve is there are no lookup tables in this product whatsoever. Every single tool is built using the Resolve built-in tools. Now, I'm gonna break this out real quick so you can see what's going on here. Now, if you've never seen this window before, you're probably not alone. This is the gallery. And in included in Resolve is a bunch of really basic looks here. But what Pixel Tools is, is a variety of these looks here. Now you can see that I've given us a basic still, and you can see essentially in one second exactly what the look is. Now I've given them some basic looks, something like Kodak Film is a film emulation, obviously Golden's gonna be like a warm look, all the way to things like scan lines, which are gonna give you an old television kind of look. Now, let's take a look at one of these. Now I have a short film here, or actually a web, uh, a webisode, and I wanna take a look at some of these different looks here. Now, what I can do is I can either just drag this look and go ahead and play it back, and there we go. Now, as you can see, it's playing back in completely real time because these are just using all basic built-in Resolve controls. Now, I've taken a Fujifilm film emulation lookup table and attempted to match it as closely as possible using all built-in Resolve controls. Now, if I take that up, disable that, and turn it on, you can see it's a pretty basic look here. Now, the difference between that and a lookup table is I can go in here and actually see what is going on here, what is being adjusted. And for instance, if I didn't like something in it, or if I wanted to tune it down, or if I wanted to adjust it and tweak it to my own, I have every power and the ability to do that. And then I can resave it if I want to. Now, say I don't really like that look. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Let's try something different here. Let's try this Mexico look. Now I can go ahead and append the node and it throws it on there. Now that's a really, really strong look and a lot of these looks are gonna come with this log transfer function built in advance. Now this is shot on a DSLR camera so I don't need this, but if this were a log camera, for instance, uh, it was shot on RED or ARRI or Blackmagic, I can enable that and I immediately have all the controls needed to normalize this clip right out of the box and essentially get started with the look. Now, I still have to do color correction. This is not going to be a colorist in the box, and I will not ever tell you that this is going to replace a colorist. But what I'm hoping this is going to do is give you guys a little bit more if you're lacking confidence in a color correction application and you like working with a colorist, or if you're not sure what to do and you wanna get a different opinion, this allows you to sort of mix and match. So for instance, say that I sort of like this look, but I wanna try something different, but I have no idea what I wanna do. Well, why don't I delete that and utilize Resolve's very, very useful split screen functionality. And instead of versions, I selected a bunch of different looks and I'm gonna to go to Selected Still. Now, I can play these back and take a seat back on a couch 
And instead of thinking about what is this look, what is it called, 1973, Mexico, South America, who cares? I like this look right here. And I can go back, figure out which one that is, and select that one visually. Now, if you've ever worked with the colors, this is one of their favorite ways of working with clients when you have pre-built looks, because you can go out, get a cup of coffee, and come back, and they've decided which look they want. <laughs> That's exactly true. The second one will be the second cup of coffee, right? So we have quite a bit of different looks in here. And I, some of these are looks that I've built. Some of these are looks that have been requested by other colorists. And some of these are looks that other colorists have submitted to me. Now, one of the things here is what happens when your image is not quite ready for a look? What if it needs a little bit of repair? Well, you're still going to have to do your basic primary controls. I'm never going to be able to take that away from you or do that automatically. But if you have some issues and you don't like scrolling through this never-ending list of resolve effects because there are so many of them, it actually becomes a bad thing because we don't know what to do. Which effect do I use to get rid of a dead pixel? Which effect do I use to paint out? What effect do I use when I want a dream sequence? Well, this can get a little bit overwhelming. And hopefully, you're able to figure this out visually using both the looks and the utilities. Now, jumping into utilities, I've used a three-step system to hopefully make this easier. Now, I'm going to break this out. Now, there's only it's not all of the utilities and looks that I've created. I'm slowly creating more, which is why I haven't pushed this out for sale right now. It's not quite ready for you guys yet, because I want, when everybody gets a hold of it, to be able to really run with it. And right now, I think we're in a walking state. But we're almost there. But for instance, if I wanted to look at, say, let's zoom these in a little bit, we have these compression artifacts. So I have mild, medium, and intense. And I'll show you what they look like. Now, you can obviously do this yourself. There's nothing really complicated about this. I'm just using the JPEG damage effect on here. Let's turn on our split screen. Let's go ahead and get rid of our gallery so you can see this a little bit. So a little bit of degradation there. But I don't really care about the controls here. I want more damage. So obviously, I've used some nice looking names just to make things easier on me. Now you can always break these out if you need to. And you can drag and adjust. And I usually drag these to a different monitor to make things easier. But I want, da -da -da, I want really, really intense compression artifacts. Let's do 90 cell phone. <laughs> and as you can see, we've totally trashed this image. Now, that's a little bit too much, as much as I like my 90s cell phone. So I'm going to actually blend it back in a little bit. So I can still control this, as opposed to a lot of effects, which are either on or off. So I can sort of use this as a start to an effect. And then if you're a visual effects artist or you're semi-comfortable with these, that's a start. So you can continue working and make it your own. So if I go down here, this is a pretty easy one. You all can drag sort of JPEG damage on there and adjust it play the slider game until you get what you want. Well, some of these are really, really interesting, and they deal with things that you would go to a colorist for because it deals with complex things like a lab saturation boost. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drag a bunch of these on here because I want you guys to see. So these are increasing saturation in a very, very unique way. And I'm doing it by using, essentially, the A and B channels of the lab color space. Now, do you guys care about that? Probably not. But if you do, you can certainly take a look at what I was doing with that. If you don't, you can just drag it on there, change the opacity, and move along. That's essentially the beauty of doing this, is if you do and you are interested in learning a little bit more about it, you can dive in there and see exactly what's going on. But honestly, if you're in a rush like a lot of people are, and you say, you know what, they want a really cool music video look, let's do cross-processed with three strip look. Let's take three strip down to 20%. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of black and white. But we're going to just do black and white on the highlights. So it's a really strange look, but you can start to see in like 
30, 45 seconds, I've put together a really unique look that if I had to really work with each controls, it would at least take me five or 10 minutes. Now, if I go ahead and get rid of all those, a lot of these are not specifically full looks. For instance, a cool push is not really a look, but when you combine a cool push with, for instance, what else we got here? It's sort of, let's do cool shadows, warm highlights. And I'm gonna go into my utilities. I'm gonna do a vignette. Now we have a bunch of different vignettes based on your aspect ratio. And this is not the right aspect ratio, so I'm gonna choose two, three, five, and tens. That's a little much, so let's clean these up. And I'm gonna back off the vignette just a bit. And last but not least, we're gonna put some faded shadows on there. So I've quickly put together four different parts of a look, and I've essentially built my own look. Now, again, whether you want to go in there and see exactly what's going on, or you care nada, and you want to just play around with it, that's hopefully what this toolkit's going to do. Now, again, as I mentioned, it's not quite released yet, and it's going to hopefully be released between late November, early December. But because you guys are the first place I go to and where I learn pretty much everything, I wanted to give you guys the first sort of discount. So if you would like to learn a little bit more, visit pixeltoolspost.com. There is not that much on there right now. All you'll find is a place to subscribe to with your email. And when we go live, there will be a place to put a coupon code and you will find that Laxy Pug gives you 20% off. And that is basically it.